Hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I hope that y'all are doing great. I had a good day today. It was a great day. And I can't believe tomorrow's already Friday. But it's it's all good. This week is just flying by. And uh, sorry I wasn't here. I'm never here on Wednesdays because I'm at youth. But Tuesday I had a meeting. So I wasn't here either. But I am back. It's Thursday. I'm back today. And today we are going to do Psalm 15. We're going to continue our diving diving into Psalms. And I don't know what else we're going to do today. We'll just see where the Holy Spirit takes us. All right. Well, let's pray. Let's go before God in prayer. God, we just praise you and thank you for all that you are and for all that you do. We just, we're so thankful, God, that you are on your throne and you are in control. Even when things seem really, really bad all around us, God, we know that you have a plan and purpose and that your timing is perfect. God, thank you for being our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector, our shelter in the storm, our strength and our refuge. And just so much more, God. You are magnificent, magnificent and powerful and mighty and miraculous, God. And you are the righteous judge that will judge all unrighteousness. But yet you are caring and loving and kind and compassionate, God, and patient. You want none to perish, God. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for calling me as your child. I love you with my whole heart, my soul, my mind, and my strength. God, we just pray for the lost. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so that they can be saved. We just pray, God, that um, the prodigals would, turn, would return home, that they would repent of their sins, and that... The relationship that they once had with you would be reconciled. We also pray for all the disasters, God. We just pray for these people. We pray for their needs to be met. God, we have hurricanes. We have storms. We have volcanoes and earthquakes, all kinds of things. God, we just pray that you would be with these people. We have wildfires also. Just send people that will be the hands and feet of Jesus, the loving compassion of Jesus, and the light of Jesus to these people. God, we pray for Afghanistan. We just pray for all these people, God, that the ones that are supposed to get out, that you would make a way for them, God, because you are the way maker, and that um, miracles would be performed in this desert, because you are the miracle worker, God, and you are the promise keeper. Many Many are there that aren't even deployed there, our retired military, putting their life on the line again because our government won't do what's right. And they are, they are fulfilling promises that they made. And you are the light in the darkness, God. In the very darkness, you are the light that we seek. We just pray for all the people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them and that you would be very close to them in their time of loss. And God, we just, uh, we pray for, we pray for unity in our country again, God. It is so disuni disunified right now. We pray for unity under you, God one nation under God, no matter what or who you are, that we would be united under you, God, and under the banner of the love of Jesus. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Whew. It's hot in my office. It is really hot in the afternoons in here. Excuse me. I'm going to Still haven't cleaned my desk off. I need some more air. 
in here. Okay, I am back. I'm back. Okay, first of all, I want to read to you. I, I did a music share. I haven't done a music share in a long time. Because I can't do it the way I used to do it. First thing in the morning, I would just do it on my phone and I could share it to my story and I could share it everywhere in like five minutes. Well, now you can't share on your phone on your story anymore. I have to do it on my computer, so usually it's in the afternoon when I do it. But today I shared Waymaker because we sang it last night and when you sing in praise and worship moments you just really break down the words a whole lot more. The words just get broke down a whole lot more when you do that. So as I was looking at the words last night, I was just like, yeah, you know, I, I have experienced every bit of this song. I have lived this song many times in my Christianity journey. So I'm going to read what I, what I wrote. I still love this song and message by Leland really more than the first time I ever heard it. The lyrics speak to my very soul. I have lived these lyrics during my Christianity journey and God has always been faithful to make a way when it looked like it was so impossible. I have experienced so many miracles that I'm a bit overwhelmed at times and can lose it later. God has always kept his promises to me. He is always the light in the darkness. And that is who God is to I love the bridge of this song. Even when we don't see it or feel it or feel that God is working, he always is. Sometimes it takes time. Sometimes his delay is due to changing others' hearts or removing obstacles. And sometimes he takes time because he is protecting us. His timing is always perfect and his plans and purposes for our lives are perfect. Even when we don't understand. Place. God was in control, is in control, and will always be in control. I believe that when we enter into our forever home in heaven, all things that happen here, we either will see how they all fit or it will not matter because of our perfect surroundings, our reunion with loved ones, and the perfection that we can only experience there. I so look forward to that perfect day when I step into eternity from this evil and fallen world, but I know that God controls that day for me, too, and until then, I am on assignment for him to share his truth in the gospel of Jesus. Move this down a little bit. Okay. Place. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. The time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16, 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. Okay, so that's what I wrote. I don't know, somehow my camera got flipped when I, I don't know how to flip it back. So it'll just have to be flipped. Okay. So that's what I wrote today about Waymaker. And uh, those were just my feelings about that song today that we did yesterday. I don't remember how to flip my camera back around, so I'm going to have to look at it. Okay. Psalms 15. <clears throat> Let's see what God has to say about Psalms 15. It says, The character of those who may dwell with the Lord. A Psalm of David. Lord, who may, be, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart 
He who does not backbite with his tongue, nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a vile person is despised. But he honors those who fear the Lord. He who swears to his own hurt and does not change. He who does not put out his money at usury. Nor does he take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. So this is what it says for the character of those who may dwell with the Lord. And so this is what my study part says. It says, include requirements for worshiping God. Includes, include experiencing fellowship with God. The tabernacle or holy hill refers to the designated place of worship. Acceptable worship comes in living blamelessly, doing righteous, and speaking truth from the heart. An individual who walks uprightly makes God the focal point of life in both action and works and practices right living daily in her relationship with others. This psalm demands self-examination and preparation for worship. So a self-examination in preparation for worship. So in other words, God wants us to be righteous, to walk uprightly, not to gossip about people, not to reproach our friends, honor those that fear the Lord. That is what God wants for us. He wants our worship from the heart too. Let's see what Proverbs 15 says. I think I read Matthew 9 today. Let's read Matthew 9. I think that's what I read today. This morning it was really good. That's what I read. No, we'll just read Matthew 9 anyway. Let's read Matthew 9. Well, Matthew 9 is kind of long. But that's okay. By the way, sorry I was late tonight. I was listening to some people. I do that. I listen to people on YouTube. And then I have... Okay, Jesus forgives and heals a paralytic. So he got into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own city. Then behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer. Your sons are your sins are forgiven you. And at once some of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, Your sons are for your sins. I don't know why I keep saying it like that. Your sins are forgiven you. Um or to say, arise and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, Arise and take up your bed and go to your house. And he arose and departed to his house. Now when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God, who had given such power to men. Well, that would be such power to you. I don't know. Matthew, the tax collector. This is the next part. My husband just started mowing outside. So if you hear a humming noise, that's it. He's mowing. As Jesus passed out there, he saw a man named Matthew 
sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, Follow me. So he arose and followed him. Now it happened as Jesus sat at the table in the house, that behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said to his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard that, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a, of a physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy and not sacrifice. For I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. For Jesus didn't come to call the righteous. He came to call the sinners, which we all are sinners. Jesus is questioned about fasting. Then the disciples of John came to him saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, Can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom will be taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one puts a piece of unshrunk, unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch pulls away from the garment, and the tear is made worse. Nor do they put new wine into old wineskins, or else the wineskins break, the wine is spilled, and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into new wineskins, and both are preserved. A girl restored to life, and a woman healed. While he spoke these things to them, behold, a ruler came and worshipped him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. So Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And suddenly a woman who had a flow of blood for twelve years came from behind and touched the hem of his garment. For she said to, to herself, if only I may touch his garment, I shall be made well. But Jesus turned around. When he saw her, he said, Be of good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And the woman was made well from that hour. When Jesus came into the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the noisy crowd wailing, he said to them, Make room, for the girl is not dead but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. But when the crowd was put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl arose. And the report of this event went out into all that land. Two blind men healed. When Jesus departed from there, two blind men followed him, crying out and saying, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him. And Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus sternly warned them, saying, See that no one knows it. But when they had departed, they spread the news about him in all that country. As they went out, behold, they brought to him a man mute and demon-possessed. And when the demon was cast out, the mute spoke. And the multitudes marveled, saying, It was never like, it was, it was never seen like this in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He cast out demons, but the ruler, by the ruler of the demons. The compassion of Jesus. This is the last part of Matthew 9. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved to compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep, having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. 
So maybe I read all that in that one thing that was in the book that I shared today on Instagram. To the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. I don't know whether you realize it or not, but the harvest is ready. The harvest is ready. And we are getting close to our bridegroom coming back to get us and taking us to our forever home, like I talked about. Like, these are not our forever homes. You can have the best, most wonderful, most awesome house, and it is not your forever home. If you belong to Jesus, your forever home is in heaven. And no home here on earth is your forever home. Because it's not going to last forever. It might be awesome today. In about 10, 15 years, it's not going to be so awesome. Because things here just don't last. You know, I had to replace my computer. My computer got so slow. My old computer got so slow. So I replaced it with this new fast one. And I love it. But in three, four years, it'll be bogged down just like my other one. And I'll have to replace it again. But things here don't last. They just don't. We want to store our treasures in heaven where they last. All right, how do we want to do the salvation message? Let's do this. We've been talking about heaven. really hard because this is flipped backwards okay so this is God's invitation to his heaven and um, it is not our heaven it belongs to him so have you ever been invited have you ever been invited into the kingdom of God through Jesus you're fixing to be the time is now to respond to his invitation repent and Turn to the one true God. So these are the scriptures that go with salvation. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.10 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5.8 For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Romans 6.23 Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. John 14.6 That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Romans 10.9-11 for whosoever call upon, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans ten thirteen. So uh, over there, oh I don't know, this is so confusing. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Behind me is a picture and I'm reading the scripture that goes with it. This heaven is our reward. And John saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. Revelation 21, 2-3. This is a prayer of salvation. It's pretty short, but I'm going to say it and I'm going to give some space so that um, you can repeat after me if you want to accept Jesus as your Savior. This is your opportunity to open up your heart and to accept Jesus as your Savior. 
Dear Lord Jesus, I admit that I am a sinner. Please forgive me. I believe that you are God's one and only Son that came to teach, heal, love, and forgive. You died on the cross for all sinners. You rose from the tomb on the third day. You ascended into heaven, and you will come back to usher your church into heaven. I confess you as my Savior, inviting you into my heart to live and reign forever. Thank you for the gift of salvation. Please give me strength to withstand the temptations in my life. Help me to praise and glorify you daily and help me grow in my relationship with you daily. me to grow through Bible study and prayer. In your precious name I pray, amen. Okay, if you accepted Jesus as your Savior by saying that prayer, or if you said your own prayer, you don't have to say that prayer. And welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is now being written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and the angels are rejoicing. Um, you are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, his Son. And if you want to grow spiritually closer to God, then read his word every day and pray to God every day and praise God every day through music or poetry or however you want to do it. Okay, well, it is time to read the blessing from God. I'm going to pray and get off of here. Okay. So numbers 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. We all need a lot of peace right now. There's a lot of unrest and a lot of all need it. We all need God's blessing. All right. Well, let's go ahead and pray. I am going to go fix my son something to eat. And uh, already ate. And I'm, I've been so hungry, but I don't know what's wrong with me today. But I'm not eating anymore. I'm just going to drink some more water. God, we just come to you, and we are so thankful, God, for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We are thankful that you are on your throne and you are in control, God. I just lift up some of my friends to you, God, that are sick. I just pray for healing for them. I just pray that you would be with their families, too, God. I pray for um, people that are recovering from surgery. I pray that you would give them a speedy recovery. And uh, people that have cancer, I know several that have cancer, God, just pray for healing for them. Just pray, God, that all of these would feel your presence. I pray for discernment, God, for 
a few people that I'm thinking of. I pray for your spiritual discernment, God. I pray, God, for my friend Josie in Austin and her family, her sisters and brothers, and her children and their children and all of their families, God. I just pray for protection and provision and blessings. And I just pray that you would be with each and every one of them, God, that you would continue to fill Josie and just make her stronger and stronger every day. And my daughter, too, help her to be stronger and stronger every day. And God, we just pray for the boldness to go forward and to share your truth and to share the gospel of Jesus. And just help us to be who you want us to be. Help us to keep following Jesus and to finish our Christianity journey race strong. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, amen and amen. Uh, pray and share, warriors. I hope you all have an awesome Friday. And I should be here tomorrow night. So, you know, let me know if you want to join me if you can tomorrow night. I'll be glad to have you. And uh, have an awesome rest of your evening and an awesome tomorrow. And much love and cyber hugs till I see you again. Good night.